Hello everyone, so let me present you how we could quickly set up uh, in Salesforce chat. So to do so we need to go to service settings and here under the view all section what we need to type is we need to type chat and select this option chat with the customers. So after that what we will be able to see is that we have some simple flow that in Salesforce allowing us to create uh, actually chat. So. Uh, during the part of this flow, the first step, what we need to do is we need to specify the name of our chat that we will use. It will be name of the queue where we will add uh, our agents that we would like to add. So they will appear here. If you will need to search for another available people, you could use this quick search from there. And so what you need to do is you need to specify um, here a uh, name of the group. Uh, for your chat because uh, where it will be showing up it will be showing up in all of kind of settings in Salesforce which is related to this specific uh, chat configurations so when we go into the next step what we need to do here it's uh, here we have a list of uh, different kind of chats that we have and uh, we need to prioritize different uh, queues of work using our routing configuration and as you could see at the moment we have a pretty big number of different uh, routings and when we create a new chat uh, what we could do is we could specify priorities that we would like to set up so for example if we think that for example this chat should have bigger priority than this one or wherever we could do so and please also note that if we are creating a lot of uh, chats one of chats could be related to for example our application another chat could be related to some of our communities and even if our product have different kind of areas like for example we are taking care about healthcare and at the same time about support what we could do is we could specify different kind of chats with different queues for different uh, business needs. So once it's done and we specify it, uh, those settings, next, what we need to do is we need to specify agents chat workload. So what does it mean? So for example, we specify in here what will be our general agent capacity. So for example, at the moment we decided that it will be 10. And each item that will uh, come up into our, uh, let's say, bucket will be have uh, size equal to one. So that means that our agent will be able to cover, let's say, 10 uh, different kind of uh, incoming uh, chats. So once it's done, what we need to do is we need to specify URL that we actually allow to use our chat. In our case, uh, we will use just Visual Force page. And for us to be able to allow that, what we need to do, we could specify something like that. So you could see that we are allowing all of kind of subdomains related to force.com and clicking next. So on that stage, what we need to do is we need to specify a type. So it will be chat related to sales. So we will have, you know, like leads available or it will be available to service where we have cases and contacts related or it will be just, let's say, a context for some generic chats. So clicking on next and what additional options do we have here? It's if for any reason we would like to uh, provide opportunity for our customers when all our agents are actually uh, let's say busy or offline. If you still don't want to lose opportunity to communicate with the customer what we could do is we could enable offline support. So there are will be some, let's say, basic uh, fields that we could select and at the moment, for example, it could be subject and web email and what we could do for us to be able to actually respond to some person who will left some comment, uh, we could make a web email field as required. So here, as you could see, we could change the order of the fields and if it's necessary, we could add any of the provided additional um, fields to add it to that form. So we are clicking on the next. And what is happening up, it's a force generate for us code snippet that we could actually amp, uh, insert into our visual force page or any kind of site or wherever place we need for us to be able to see the actual chat available. So for example, in my case, I have a visual force created with the name web chat. So as you could see, it's pretty simple page. And uh, everything what I do have here is I just inserted this code snippet. What it's do, it's first of all, including this uh, and its service library and after that we have this code snippet that actually contains all of our settings that we just set up uh, during this initial uh, configurations so once it's done 
we grab the code, we provide it to developer to insert into the necessary site, application, community, or wherever. We are just clicking next. And from there, what we could do is we could go to uh, actual settings of our ended service. And what is the settings of our ended service? So first of all, we have basic uh, settings that allow us to enable or disable this chat. And uh, for us to do so, we have this uh, activator here. Another important setting that we have is the chat settings. If you will dive into that uh, category, what we will have here is you could see that we have this uh, create chat page. What does it mean? So every time when our customer trying to reach out to us, what we could do before the actual conversation is we could try to get some information about this specific person. So for example, we could ask him to specify uh, some first name, last name, email, subject of his problem. And uh, based on this information, once uh, this uh, conversation will start, what we will be able to see in Salesforce, that Salesforce will automatically show to us a contact related to uh, the specific case. So from there, we could also add new fields. If it's required, we could mark some fields as required as well. So once it's done, we could click on uh, save and our pre-chat form will be available. So as we already discussed for this offline support, if we later decided that we need to add some additional fields, uh, we could do it right from there. So we could uh, um, specify also here offline support header image, for example, for us to be able to easily identify, for example, at this moment we are in offline mode. And from there, we could specify also fields by the same way how we did it on the first initial setup flow. Um, so once it's done, we have here another section related to additional branding. And in the additional branding, what we could do is we could specify images for avatars of our agents. Uh, during the chat, here we could specify um, image for logo, also pre-chat background, waiting state background, so all this kind of stuff we could specify here. And also one more note, uh, as an implementation guide, what we could do is we could actually upload our images into static resources and uh, like provide links to them uh, here. Uh, basic font size and dimensions, so that's it in general. Uh, what we could specify in additional branding. Uh, also, once we perform any kind of configuration related to our chat, like for example, uh, we change it branding, we change it how it's look like, uh, we change it uh, text or wherever. Um, what we could do, uh, we or maybe what we should do is we always need to grab uh, latest code snippets uh, related to that. Uh, and the service. So based on it, uh, we will be able to each time update that code snippet that we already inserted because it's not dynamically becoming updated. And also please note that uh, what else we have here is we have possibility to customize wherever we have like chat header, chat messages, uh, minimize it, uh, view, pre-chat form, these um, lightning components if it will be necessary for us to let's say increase some functionality or uh, change the already existing behavior. So it's how it's in general look like. So here also in the chat we have additional settings that allowing us to uh, play with it, like possibility for us to set up sensitive data rules. If for example, uh, let me just click new. Uh, so what is the main idea here? Uh, we have in general pattern we're specifying this pattern and if for any reason, for example, somebody trying to uh, provide any kind of uh, sensitive information, uh, what we could do is we could remove the text or replace it with, for example, with uh, the following symbols. And by this way, uh, we could actually hide or remove any kind of sensitive data from the uh, um, chat messages. Um, what else do we have? Uh, so, for example, once we created um, our configuration for the chat, uh, once it's appearing here, so we could go to the specific configuration and what we could do here is we could specify to actually what will be our language should we uh, enable customer timeout. So it's a um, 
settings where you could see description right there. Uh, also here we have customer timeout, so for what amount of time we actually uh, need to message or wait for the chat to be ended before the you know like uh, actual conversation will be ended. So all of these kind of uh, messages are available here and one important option that we have here is auto greeting. If for any reason we would like to say something like uh, hello dear and we would like to insert like visitor name so we could do it right from there or copy it there and uh, just it. Um, also when we specify an actual routine type for our organization we could uh, select from here what we would like to use omni-channel settings or it should be most available or least active person uh, so we could specify all of this uh, stuff right from there um, okay so once it's done we just saving those configurations what else do we have right from there it's our chat agent configurations um, let's see what is inside uh, so here in Salesforce, what is available for us is we could actually see what our customer typing on the form even before uh, the person will actually send this message to us. So it's uh, always allowing our agents to be one step ahead and maybe uh, at the same time looking for some help article or looking for some snippet of the text or some documents that he would like to share with the person once uh, the person will just send this uh, big email to uh, him. So also here we have this auto greeting, uh, out the way on decline, out the way and push them out settings, uh, possibility to uh, perform file transfer, visitor blocking enabled, and assistant flag. So let's just uh, edit here. So here we could also specify to what uh, users we would like to apply those settings or it should be applied uh, on the wider range for example if we want to apply it to profiles so all these kind of settings we could set up right from there and uh, next option is what we have it's uh, block visitors so um, what we could do here is we could uh, block specified uh, IPI range or block specified single IP address based on the uh, chat information so I will show later from where we could actually grab this IP address. So for example, let's imagine situations that someone starting to play with a chat on some site, starting to put some, uh, let's say, uh, spam emails, not emails, but spam cases for your organization. You could actually block uh, the person by IP address. Um, Also, uh, here we will uh, work closer with the present statuses and based on the some presence uh, configurations that uh, we use, for example, in our case, it's chat agent, uh, we will be able to uh, play with our omni-channel. So let us actually move to the demo and see how it's in general works. So there are, when we open omni-channel in our service console, here we have a couple of statuses available and assign it, for example, to the profile or user that I'm using. So default status is offline, and when, for example, we are offline and someone goes into our um, page that already have chat uh, inserted, what he will be able to see, he will be able to see the specific form that we uh, set up to be used when our agent's offline. So, for example, from there, we could set up some test data, and what will happen once we will submit uh, that form, it will uh, create a case in the system and later when agents will be available, someone will be able to pick up that case. Um, but what happens when, for example, our agent becoming online, when he is available, let me just refresh the page. And when we click on this chat button, what is happening? It's we will be able to see the pre-chat form that we configured that for example we would like based on the user that is trying to interact with our chat be able to understand what is the person so we are just providing some fields to the person to fill up and once he clicking on the start chat what is happening in Salesforce it's uh, that chat request coming to our agent 
based on the routing that we specified. In our case, it's uh, omni-channel routing. And when we accept in that case, what is happening, we automatically see a new tab open. And in this new tab, uh, we could specify necessary conversation with our uh, customer. And uh, as you could see also, here we have this uh, specified greeting that we did just uh, a couple of minutes ago. So what additional options do we have uh, right there? So one of options which is available is past chats messages. So if, for example, for any reason we would like to see uh, what this person is usually coming to us, so we could see everything from there. So here you will be able to entire, let's say, history of conversation with that client. And here, as I uh, promised, uh, we have possibility to see what is a visitor IP address, what is his location, what is his browser, what his platform, all this uh, user agent information. So all this kind of information we could grab directly from there if for any reason we will see that this person trying to spam us. Uh, so once it's done and our customer uh, could see some welcome message, he could text us. Okay, and what agent will be able to see? He will be able to see that those messages come up and he could also put his answers which is, will be automatically available to our um, customer. So additional options that we have right here, as I already mentioned, it's uh, contact information directly available and uh, it's showing up here based on the pre-chat form. So it's helping us to understand with what person we are actually communicating at the moment. And here what options we have is possibility to transfer our case to next agent if we will have anyone online if for example it was assigned to us by mistake or some reason of our case is different than what is expected for that separate person. Also what we could do is we could create conference if it's necessary for us to ask another agent to attend us. And uh, here we have possibility to block this visitor from the chat or we could uh, request assistance. Uh, also what is available here is we have this uh, quick text. So if you would like to have some kind of uh, text snippets with some merge fields that you would like to be able to quickly use, you could create it right from there. But at the moment I have one prepared, I could uh, quickly uh, set it here and send to our customer. So uh, from there what we have, if we for example uh, ended our conversation, when we click on the end chart, uh, what our person will see is the chant is ended by the agent and we are closing it. So in general that's all from the basic configuration of our um, chat and so forth. So thank you for the attention.